I'm doing that with my wife because, yes, because you enjoyed the last wife coaching. So we are doing that and we are playing dwarves. And I already prepared the dwarf deck. This are the show dwarves. <laughs> and the show dwarves are an incredibly strong deck which can lead to success. Skill cap of the deck, medium. Medium means not easy, not hard. <laughs> medium, okay. We just got up, yeah. So <laughs> I can just check this out. Yeah. And um, May I ask any question I want? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. Can we go through the cards to start with? Yes, guys. So, my wife requests that we go through all the cards. <laughs> well, not too intensively, just... Usually she hates it as hell. So we are playing, <laughs> but that is something private, but we are playing and... Um, and she's watching and whenever she's watching <laughs> and she's asking questions, I open this screen and begin to explain why the cards are in the deck. And she's usually falling asleep then. I mean, not really, she's just... Leaving. Leaving. <laughs> but okay, whatever. Well, I define the pace, then. You define the Give pace. Give me the mouse. No, Give the mouse, mouse is in my hand. Okay. No, but seriously. So, um, the basic idea of the deck is that you play a lot of these dwarves. And for those who are now saying, hey, we are not playing the Golden Dwarf, it's simply because these cards are strong, in my opinion. Every single one of them, I have really been thinking about it a lot and I know the gold dwarf is awesome but I believe that these are even more awesome huh? putting that aside um, <clears throat> so the general idea is of course how the name also indicates dwarf synergy huh? and how is this dwarf synergy being produced so we have different cards which are more synergetic with dwarfs the Mehakim guard this is an 8 stature, but if you have dwarves on the board, it basically becomes a 10 stature. And obviously, having dwarves on the board in a dwarf deck is not a very difficult thing to be accomplished. Mm. Putting that aside, this guy can also pump up dwarves which are resilient. Resilient means they will carry over into the next round. And if you buff something which has resilience, well, then the buff is even more important because you don't only produce, not only do you produce stats for this round, but you also produce stats for the next round. Deploy means um, it does it the moment you play it, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. So and that's kind of um, a battle cry, like whenever you play it, it does it one time. Actually, it gives all this information on the card, on the... In the what tool tip. that tool in the tool tip? Yes. I didn't even notice that before. Yes, it does. Okay. So if you are wondering about a card, you can just hover over it for two seconds and then it will show you what it does ah, and what these keywords mean, like boost, deploy. Whenever something is pr being printed in bold letters on the card, yeah. then that's um, being explained if you hover okay, over yeah. it. Okay. So um, we do have Dennis Kramer, and this is even more important because you might argue, hey, if you are playing these, in order to make them synergetic, you don't even need to play that many dwarves, and that's right. Um, but we also do have stuff like Dennis Kramer. So Dennis Strengthmer is strengthening all our other dwarves, and strengthening means increasing base strength. Um, and basically does it with um, the other thing would be boosting. And um, it, this guy actually strengthens all your dwarves in your deck, hand or on your side of the board by one. So that means the more dwarves, the better, or the other way around. The dwarves that you might usually not play are suddenly playable because they will probably receive a buff of one step. And one step in Grand is quite important. Then we have... And wait a second. So basically strengthen means the base unit gets strengthened, so it's actually the card itself getting amended. And boosting is just for one round or just while it's on the board? Or? Um, no. Boosting is influencing non-base stats. And the okay. other one is influencing base stats. There What's are the cards... There are cards which basically reset cards to base yes. strengths, and if the base strength is higher, the okay. reset is basically... So strength is better than boosting? Yes. Okay. By a small margin, but it's better. Okay. So we have scaling decks, I mean, that's not dwarf synergetic specifically, um, but we do have ba Buckley else. I mean, for him you also only need to at least play, let's say, two or three dwarfs, <clears throat> um, but we also have Yarkon. 
And Japan is basically getting boosted whenever you play a dwarf. So if you want to play Japan at any point of the game, you would like to have some more dwarves in your hand. Yeah. Uh, the more the better, because obviously he gets boosted by one for every dwarf you play. So that's the general idea. So you're playing the dwarves. And maybe some other thoughts uh, to the cards we are playing. So there's one thing, which is, um, I mean, in Gwent, you have access to mulligans. And those mulligans are for free. Yeah? I mean, they are not labeled as such, but you have three available three mulligans um, at the beginning of the game, and then one mulligan each. Yeah? And this is, if you take a look at it, this is kind of a resource you've got. Yeah? So you have this availability of these mulligans. And, well, there are cards which incentivize or which are better if you have mulligans available. And those cards are those which are extremely bad if you have them in your hand, but which are extremely good if you don't have them in your hand. Examples for that are the War Dancer, which is basically a mere three stats if you have him in your hand. But if you mulligan him, well, he just comes for free for three stats. So if you draw him, you're very sad. But if you can mulligan him, you're very happy. Mulligan means when you mulligan it away and you're mulligan, it gets that moment deployed on the board. Yes, the war dancer. Um, the roach would come for free while it's in your deck. But if it's in your hand, again, you might be sad because five stats as a card is not exactly ideal. Usually you would expect like 10 stats from a card, not five. So if you draw it, you're sad. But if you can mulligan it at your deck and you get it for free, that's kind of awesome. But it summon this unit on a random row whenever you play gold card. So the moment I play a gold card, this comes out of my deck and gets put on the board. Exactly. And if I have it in my hand, I can just play it for five um, sets. Exactly, okay. but that's not a very good, not good thing to do. Okay. Yeah, so, and the same goes for Saskia. So while seven sets as a card is not exactly good, you get it for free. You get her for free. And Orders means when the hero ability, when the hero is used, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. So um, <clears throat> long story short, you would like to have as many mulligan dependent cards um, as possible, as long as you think you will be able to use your mulligan resource on those cards. And if you do it, let's say, in a little bit more analytical way, it's roughly 50-50 for every card to be in your hand, which means at the beginning, at the start of the game, which means if you play one, two, three, four cards which are mulligan dependent, it means that on average, you will probably draw two of them, a little bit more, doesn't matter, 2.1, 2.2. But you have three mulligans available, um, at the beginning of the game, which means if you play four mulligan dependent cards, um, you will only run out of mulligans if you really draw all of them. And that's again 50% to the power of four, which is like 6%. It's very low that you draw all of them. Keep in mind that if you draw, let's say, one war dancer and you already have these two in your hand, you can basically use one mulligan to blacklist this one. So that blacklisting means that you don't draw the second one. Uh, so that's quite important. At the same time, we don't want to play too many of them. So if you play too few of them, you waste mulligans. <coughs> but if you're playing too many of them, you might just draw them in bad moments and then you might not be able to mulligan good cards. If you make mulligan math, I won't go into details here, a mulligan on the roach is an average worth 7 to 8 stats. It's a silver card. Um, a mulligan on the Saskia is worth roughly 11 stats, but it's a gold card. And a mulligan on the board answers obviously worth three stats. Where this comes from is that you on average need 0 0.6 mulligans on the roach. It has five stats, so it comes for free. Um, so you just divide that by 0 0.6. It's a little bit more than eight, but then there are also other drawbacks. So that's kind of the rough number. And this has as rough number 11, if you do the math. And then those are obviously three, because if you mulligan them, well, then they are three. And if you don't mulligan, them, well, they're nothing. They don't even come out of your deck for free. And in general, it means that 11 stats as a gold card is better or equivalent to 8 stats on a silver card. Um, but that's definitely better than the War Dancers, which are representing 3 stats per mulligan. Yeah? So if you want to cut anything, it's not this, it's not this, but it's the third War Dancer first. Okay. Um, other than that, we talked about the mulligan polarization cards. We talked about the dwarves. Um, so let's talk about the cards which are not dead. So 
we talked about this, we talked about this, we talked about this, uh, we talked about this, we talked about these, we talked about the dwarfs and the synergetic effects, and there's ID or Ida, sorry, Ida, and Ida is a sorceress. I don't even know, it's a mage. Yeah, um, mages are doing in every class, mages are doing three things one thing is a weather effect and a browser weather effect, the impenetrable fog weather effect is one of the good ones, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether it's rain or fog, so that stays the same as like the mages, the other mages. There is clear skies, which nowadays you might want to have at least one time in your deck, because there are these golden weathers which might destroy you otherwise. It's not that bad if you cannot cancel out both gold weathers if your opponent is playing them, because first of all, your opponent would need to do both of them, and second of all, you can at least pass one weather away. But if they deploy the second one in another round, you cannot do that, and then you would maybe have access to clear skies. So the one is offensive, the other one is defensive, right? Yes, this is offensive, okay. this is defensive, okay. and you also have Quensign, and this is situational. So you can shield and boost your dwarves in your hand. So let's say, for example, you would draw three of those. You might want to opt into the Quensign, because that's kind of strong, um, specifically on the resilient dwarves. Because well, they are resilient, they are carrying over, so they are high priority targets. But you can just shield your high priority targets. And um, putting that aside, um, she's one of the very few mages which has a force that base. So she's stronger than the other mages, and as such, it becomes kind of a no brainer to play her, honestly. But this is uh, one of the cards which is a little bit more difficult to be played. And um, we talked about this, and now we are talking about the buffs. So these buffs. I mean, that's, there's also a short, funny story to that. So when I built the deck, um, I was basically putting in these immune boosts into the deck many times. And the reason for that was because um, if you make the calculations, I believe that uh, adding three stats and three armor is probably just better than adding four stats. Yeah? So I believe this to be better than this, even in general, but specifically so, if you can put armor on these dwarves. Again, if you can put armor on high priority targets like resilient dwarves, the armor becomes much, much more important because suddenly they are high priority targets. Yeah? So um, usually three armor might be as much worse as one stat, maybe a little bit more. Um, but if it, uh, you put it on a high priority target, the three armor is equivalent to basically two stats. The reason for it is, well, armor is shielding your unit, and if your opponent wants to get rid of the unit, he first needs to bridge the armor. So, I played this deck with more immune boosts and with her, because I will, I will talk about her in a second. So, I played her, and nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened. So, how could that be? Well, she's pulling you Bros' special card. And now, and this is very funny, what I thought is that... All, I mean, there are minions, and minions are minions, sure, <laughs> and there are spells, or things which are not minions. And usually in Gwen, everything which is not a minion is a special card. So if you take a look at this, these are all special, these are all special, so everything is a special card, yeah? So I was naturally assuming, I mean, you, you we went through this, but yeah, so I was naturally assuming that you might be able to do Ithlina with the immune boosts. But uh, it proved wrong uh, because it um, it appears that the immune boost uh, and the overdose um, are the only two cards in the game at the very moment which are nor minion nor special. So if you play her and you only have immune boost in your deck, nothing happens. What does this red eye mean? Uh, that means it's a spy. So you don't get her on your side of the board, but yeah. you get her on the opposite side of the board. So the opponent gets the stats for them? The opponents get the stats for her, that's right. And what do you get for it? Um, for that, she's doing a stronger effect than she should if she would have stats on your side. Uh, okay. So she's just doing a lot. I will also come to that, but first about these potions. So these potions are there because first of all, I mean, you're kind of a little bit rose taking the front row, and as such, it might be a good idea to be able to buff adjacent units. That's number one. Number two, is that if you can buff the resilient walls, well, stats which are buffing resilient stuff are just better and stronger than if you don't. Because if you buff non-resilient stuff, you only buff for one turn. 
for one round. But if you buff resilient stuff, you basically buff for two rounds. And that's much better. Um, for those who are wondering about the Thunderbolt potion in general, because, I mean, as you know, in my last review from the last patch, I said that the Thunderbolt potion is kind of strong. And you will probably see it being played a lot. The reason why you haven't seen it played, uh, being played a lot yeah, was not because it's not strong or something like this. But the reason was that there were exponential decks out there. And exponential decks mean decks which can s create over time a really sick amount of stats, like a lot of stats. An example was like, um, I mean, just the decks which were being played, like Monsters, Hensel, all of those decks had the ability of suddenly burst you down with like one card for 20, 25, 30 stats. Monsters created suddenly 15, 20 stats every round. And obviously in a meta where decks can just create 15 to 20 stats with every card, 12 stats are not exactly appealing to be played. But this changed because nowadays there are not that many exponential decks. So suddenly you might be quite happy to be able to play a card and boost your units by the way. Okay, so um, we have the weathers. But I believe the weathers are just very good. Yeah, they are just wait a second, good. can you stay on one card? Yes. So this one? No, it doesn't matter. This one? <laughs> we'll start with the first one, yeah. They're so doing the same. Apply Ragnador to all rows on your opponent's side. So that affects all rows, right? Um, they are the same. This is, dam this is damaging the lowest units and this is damaging the highest units. So and gold units cannot be damaged, right? Gold units cannot be damaged. What happens right? if the highest unit is a gold unit? Does no unit get damaged or does the second highest unit get damaged then? Um, it's the second highest unit. So okay. it basically damages the highest non-gold unit on the road. Okay, I see. Okay. And this can only be removed with clear skies from the opponent. That's right. And can I apply two weathers at the same time? Um, they are they override each other, so you okay. can basically even cancel out uh, bad weather with a less bad weather. Okay, but so basically, if I play Ragnar Do and then the um, it's draw, uh, Ragnar Rock, Ragnar Rock, <laughs> and then the draw like in the Nordic fail, uh, fairy tale. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Nordic fairy tale. No, it's a Nordic saga. And yeah, you have to watch Vikings. <laughs> Ragnar Rock is yeah. the the. Dawn of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the let's the tag. The let's the tag. The ultimate day where everything. But the draw will override him anyways. The draw will override him <laughs> because this is also kind of apocalyptic. If you well, will. it's quite ap ap apocalyptic. Yeah, it is. So damage disease. Okay, the unit. And the start of the turn. Does it mean any turn, every turn, or just the start of a particular person's turn? Um, at the start of his turn. At the start because of his it's, turn. Because it's on his. <clears throat> on his um, side of the board. Yeah. So that means um, at the beginning of his turn, all the weathers are triggering. Okay, so turn start is basically always on the side that something is. When this person's turn is, then yes. this happens. Okay. Yes, okay. exactly. Okay. And now as the last card, we have Itlina. <laughs> and I believe Itlina to be well, just stronger than the Dwarf. Yeah? So I think she's very amazing. Um, you can basically get this spell two times, and for that you give him two stats. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. Can you can you stay on that for a second? Yes. So deploy, play a bronze special card from your deck. So the moment I play it, this effect is already triggered, right? Um, so this pulls the this one. This pulls this one, and always because it's and all then I special. have to apply it that moment. Yes, and then you get it again. In my hand, or it stays in the deck? No, you just play it twice. Oh, you I. You just play it twice. Yeah. Oh wow! So that's pretty good. That's pretty okay. good. Um, so for those who are wondering, I mean, you know that I'm a Siri fan, um, but it just happened for those cards to be stronger. I believe. I mean, I believe Siri is super strong. Yeah. Is there Don't any removal in there? Uh, removal for strong units on your opponent's side? No, you don't. I mean, you have the weather, so you don't really want to have additional removal because when the weather um, stays. It will damage everything anyways. Mm -hmm. If you cannot cancel it out, it's it's like uh, you really don't want to have removers. Whereas, I mean, you have these guys which can deal some damage to your opponent's side. Yeah. They're dealing three damage each, so you might be able to take out high priority targets sometimes, but it's like not hard removal or something. But they cannot attack um, gold units either. So gold units are untouchable, right? There are cards which can touch them, but usually, as a rule of thumb, they are quite untouchable. Okay. Yeah. Um, so again, to the theory thing, um, it's just that she's very good, like very, very good. 
but this is kind of super strong, mega strong. This is mega strong, and those are mega strong. And the same goes for him. I mean, he's also very, very good, specifically in the fall. But I believe these to be strong. Okay, whatever. So um, maybe before we start off with the gameplay, replacements. Maybe not. Maybe we should start off with the gameplay, and then we go to potential replacements of different parts. We go into the casual gameplay because we are still level eight. But this will change dramatically very soon because I mean it's only two levels to go. So yeah, please yeah. go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um... So rank match is only possible from um, level two, yeah, uh, level ten. Yeah. Level ten, yeah, that's right. Okay, so I try to mulligan all the cards that are summoned otherwise. So this yes. is Saskia, the Roach, and those two three step guys. What's that's the name? right. Um, uh, the war dancers. War dancers. Okay. Oh, and my my hero, he is a dwarf as well. The hero is pulling your silver unit, and you uh, prioritize. The eight times dwarf because he's buffing everything immediately. Yeah. But you can also draw, draw the resilient dwarf because he's not very good at round three, which means you just complete um, what uh, you're missing part. So basically, the the frame around the card is always what it is, right? So if it has a golden frame, it's a golden card. If yes. It has a, okay, I see. So I'm going through all that first. I don't want those, right? But I look at all of them first. Yeah. I never want Saskia, you said. Yes. So this always goes first, right? You get yeah. Maligan her first, unless you have so Roach, Roach and Saskia and the Elven War Dancer, then you do first the War Dancer. But yeah, usually it's just Saskia first. Yeah. Okay, Saskia first. Um, why is it not? Ah, okay. And then this one needs to go, and this is going to be deployed immediately, no? That's right. right. Okay, That's right. so this goes. And now a third one, yeah? I don't need all three of those, do I? No, probably not. Would I just mulling away the double one then, or...? Um, since you cannot um, summon Immune Boost with Edlina, you want to uh, mulligan always the Thunderbolt for sure. Ah, okay. Immune boost. okay, I see. Keep also in mind that the Immune Boost <coughs> is uh, carrying diminishing returns, because the Immune Boost gives you armor, and the armor, I mean, if you shield your unit with armor once, he needs to overcome that, maybe he doesn't want that. Yeah. But if you shield it twice, he definitely doesn't want to overcome that. So okay. the first one is much more important than the second one. And uh, one thing to the immune boost, because you could wonder why I'm playing the immune boost many decks don't. I mean, it's yeah. it's kind of an unplayed card. And I believe it to be specifically strong on, of course, resilient units. But the armor as well, not only because they have priority targets, but because they also stay uh, on the board to do with the armor. Okay, so this I never want to do because... I cannot play it right now this, because I don't have three units, right? That's right. Okay, but if you play, move, I don't want to move them around. No. You could, for example, put Who's your hero. End? You could, for example, do your hero core eight. Do my hero? Yeah, but there will be always stuff oh, coming oh, out, so you have to hurry a little bit. Okay. So you click there, thunder, uh, okay, somewhere? and you pull the eight warp, which eight is warp. Uh, warp buffing. Uh, that one. one, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You have to so, deploy him. Oh, uh, okay. No, he gets deployed immediately. Okay, so wait a second. So basically, what happened? Saskia was summoned because I played a golden card. Yes, uh, because you played uh, the leader. Because I played the leader. Then yes. the Roach came because I played a golden card, which was a leader as well. Yes. And this was actually. No, that was not the leader. Like, that's the combo, right? So you play your, your leader, and yes. the leader pulls you Saskia it's for free. The golden free. card? When that's the golden card, and with yeah. double weather. You might usually have problems to pull out the roach, so because if you play a weather, you don't yeah. pull out the roach, oh, which, okay. which means that um, if you would want to play the double golden weather, and you definitely want to play the double yes. golden weather, you would probably not be able to justify playing the roach in your deck. But because we play Saskia, yeah. we basically guarantee if you have a hero which we want to use round one, yeah. which is this hero, because you always want to use him round one to do something, to pull off something. Um, we would like to um, we would like to do this uh, always round one. This will guarantee us the golden pool. Yes. And the golden pool will guarantee us the roach. Okay. And the dwarf, like the hero power, guarantees us that we can choose the card. Yeah. So now Just... I want to clear the weather, and for that I can use this one, right? That's right. Just a short uh, notion to um, placement. So Ruck and uh, the Skelliger's Corn always damages from right to left. So you want to place your golden card always 
on the very bottom right so that you're oh, not okay. that you're not vulnerable to scaling too complex storm. for me now okay, that costs this, three stats okay this needs to go here and i need to do clear skies right yes and then i go click here no, it oh it's automatically oh, okay it clears all of them oh it clears rows. all of them so it's okay. pretty amazing I, I could have put the dwarf like the how do you pronounce the it? leader or brewer the or... brewer i could have put it somewhere else as well right uh, oh but he doesn't get damaged no, Quite but the, the Skellige Scorn is being the damage from right to left. So, and uh, you get Zaskia and the Roach pull first, so you could have just placed them on the right side without any drawback, saving yeah. you three stats. Because then it would have damaged three on the Golden, which doesn't have an effect, ah, two and one. Ah, okay, okay, okay. What is the rule of thumb for passing? I mean, I have 25, he has 12. Well, what, what, what does he do? Did you clear weather from the row, and what does the girl do? Uh, draws a special card from your deck, then draw a card. Okay, that was kind of unlucky because he cleared out the weather where there wasn't weather. So it's well, good for us, right? Yeah, good for us because we also have weather in our hand. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. But what is the rule of thumb for passing? I mean, he needs more than one card to overcome us, right? I'm not sure about that. If yes, we could pass. But I'm not sure whether that's the case. But that's the idea that you basically say, okay, he needs at least two cards to overcome us, then you would normally pass. That's can right. you say that roughly? Oh, no, absolutely. You can. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. We can buff. We can buff. I want to buff. No, you always want to buff your resilient guys first. So that uh, means. Is that a resilient one? Yeah, that's a resilient one. But you could also do a weather, simply because if you draw the second weather, you might not be able to uh, deploy that any longer. Okay, that's the weather, right? Yeah, you can just do that. Rock, la, roll. <laughs> it's Ragnarok. Yeah. Ragnarok. And this does what again? Oh, and here you can see all the cards that have been played ever since, right? Yes. Ah, okay. So this is just apply, turns the damage to highest unit on the row by three. Oh, I think it has. It's kind of absolutely acceptable. If you play a weather and then you cannot proceed, it's perfectly fine. I mean, that's actually a very good spot to be in. Because now you have the draw. But what you also know is that he probably didn't have weather cancellation. Okay. Yeah. Well, but he drew two cards now, right? Sure, sure. Okay, so this, yes, we do have this um, this card to... I will probably get rid of one of the dwarves. No, 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 this one, yeah. Just get rid Deploy of Deploy damage yeah, and... Oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's, the reasoning for that is because you have three Thunderbolt potions, <clears throat> like with the yes. it mean, um, and you need to play the round because you want to buff your resilient dwarves. Yeah? And but I don't really need... Re Oh yeah, I do need resilience. Okay. You need to play the resilient always this round, because um, if you play the last round, it's basically future. Well, I just thought, well, and we don't need to win that round, right? We don't need to win that round, but I mean, you could also just pass, but that's very bad because then your resilient dwarfs won't see any application. Okay, let's and play a resilient dwarf then. Tack. Tack. Resilient dwarf played. And that's... we will carry him over if we... Lose because if we win, it's over anyways, right? No, you always carry him over. Well, yeah, but if you we win, sure. Okay. Um, the um, there is um the reason why we mulling the back row dwarf uh, was because um he is not in the front row and as such we cannot buff him. Right? What's uh, actually his hero ability? He can lock. Locking means that he can also remove resilience. Disables a card's abilities, disables and reveals ambushes? What's an ambush? ambush. Um, that's uh, an elven card. Oh, okay. do, uh, does it reveal what? what does it disables do? and reveals ambushes. Oh, locking is now disabled. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, oh, we need to do something. So, um, deploy damage an enemy by three. Do I want to damage the resilient one, right? Um, yeah, but you could also do the weather because he also showed us that he didn't have weather clearance last round. Okay. Which means if you do the weather now, if you didn't draw the weather within two cards, yeah. Um, you probably just gain three additional damage. And this weather did what? Damage the lowest unit. Yeah. Okay. What you can also do is you can also check out um, whether he can clear the weather or not. I mean, obviously we are doing that at the moment. <coughs> but if you realize that he cannot clear out your weather, Mm -hmm. Well, then we are good to go, because then we just play the round. But, like, what I don't really get is playing the weather as a prevention, basically. You you play it, and then everything that's non-golden, he has to play into it, right? Unless he plays it in the same row, then just the weakest unit gets Wait, it. Wait, again. Um, 
when you play the weather without many cards on the board, you don't have the immediate effect, right? You just prevent him from playing cards without taking damage. All right. So what you do is, if you play the weather, you do three damage immediately if you cannot clear it out. Yes. So it basically means um, that you gain three damage if you cannot clear it out. And yes. if, you, if you cannot clear it out, maybe you lost three damage because you dealt three damage instead of a potential six damage before yeah. he clears it out. Boost an ally by three if it's a dwarf, boost at five instead. That's a dwarf, right? That's a dwarf. Okay, so I boost him, right? Sure. Tuck. Resilient, boost it. Tuck. You said to boost the resilient unit, but now it's very big. Now it's very um, easy to be targeted by Scorch or these... Um, what's the name? Igni. Usually they don't say that. It's not very advisable in the current meta, so that's kind of fine. So now I need to know my opponent's deck as well, right? I mean, I'm just getting into my deck. That's kind of what the deck is about, or what the gameplay is about. Keep in mind that because we have applied the draw, and he could only clear out one row, he even yeah. use Shani on it, he can basically make the read that he doesn't have additional weather clearance. Which means we should indeed play the round out anyways. Yeah. Because the back two rows, there will be minions which can only be um, what is this uh, deployed the Sorry. in the back and mid row. And uh, they will then suffer. That's a fault. This is basically doing two damage to your highest unit uh, every, every round. Okay, but now we can remove the resilient unit on his side with three, right? Uh, yeah, but then you wouldn't get the buff. I would just play the buff dwarf again. On the resilient one again? Yeah, you can do that. I mean, depending how much you want to play around Igni. So, I mean, in this case, obviously, we are Igni build. But if you would have buffed the other one, he would have not even needed Igni, because then um, Fog deals two, bring it to nine, and then both die. So you rather want to set it up in this way, because then you then the Fog uh, continues to deal only, only one damage more. Okay. Well, the, what do I want to do first? I mean, normally I would tend to say, hey, the moment I have three adjacent units, I buff them. But I really want to get rid of this resilient guy. No, that doesn't matter. I mean, <laughs> he, he doesn't really disappear. I mean, in this case, this guy will buff uh, one every turn, right? So you still have one turn to remove him later. Well, but unless he buffs him with one or with anything. If you really want it that badly, you can also get rid of him. I want to get rid of him. Sure. <laughs> oh, okay, this goes here. And basically, that little sign here always shows where I'm allowed to put the card. And if it's a circle, I'm allowed to put it anywhere, right? Those are called agile units, and you can basically deploy them wherever you want. So we have this one card in the deck where you um, can decide which randoms up where the dwarves are, right? We have to walk them. Well, this guy is basically uh, persecuting all dwarves from the row, and then uh, the Fischoichti. He is uh, saying all dwarves from this row disappear. So I use it when they are weather affected, for example. Or when I have too many dwarves in one row, because we have a very heavy first row, right? Well, that's fine. Nowadays, there is nothing which actually punishes rows taking too much. So that's, that's absolutely acceptable. OK, but now we can finally buff them, right? Yeah, you can buff them. Oh, or do I buff them with this one? I would, because um, that's the strongest buff. And this I can but put... Wait, actually, you could even do the... I just see that you could also use the overdose first, because then the fog would uh, continue to deal damage on the armor first, which is in your interest. So um, that's where we go. Which one is that? That's this one. Yeah, there. Yeah. That's where we go. And I have to target the middle one in order for all three to get buffed? That's right. That's okay. right. <laughs> yeah. And now they all have armor. Look at this. This is, whoa, this is like the kingpin. Look at this. The kingpin with 13 and three armor. <laughs> and he's telling the, whoa, the Mahakangora guards on the left and right side. Look at that. Very nice. That's like insane. Very nice. That's like crazy. What is this card doing? Turns to damage a random enemy by one, ignoring armor. Okay. That yeah, doesn't matter. So, You're happy that they have armor, so that's fine. Okay, and I, I go all in because I really want to win that round, right? Or um, do I not do that because I have a resilient unit? No, you can just go. Uh, I mean, you, you want to make a big use of I want to make it all very big. So the, I put this in the, in the. No, it's gold, so it will not get damaged by the draw. Uh, anyway. you, can, you can block his buffer by deploying this here. So by this, you basically block off his buffer. Okay, I didn't understand that, but you can explain it when we're done. Okay, so I click this. Yes. And I click it on here. Yes. And then I click it again. Bam, bam! <laughs> cool! And the thing is that okay. this guy is basically buffing uh, both um, minions next to each other. Yes. So um, if you put the gold in between, 
he is not continuing to go. Let me read that. It turns out if this unit is armored boost adjacent unit by one, and this one cannot be boosted because it's golden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, so there's no adjacent units, basically. You basically disrupted his button chain. Is that like in the past with the monsters when you disrupted the uh, yes, chain? Yes, that's right. Okay, okay. That's right. Consume chain. Consume chain. Got it. <laughs> okay. Is there any way that I can take a look at my cards that I have remaining? Um, yeah, there are. No, I mean the cards specifically. Um... You have to think about it, but you can take a look at your graveyard, and if you know your deck, you can basically make conclusions of the right figure. Right? Ah, okay. Ah, okay, but I cannot right click on my remaining deck. No, okay. this okay. is not. Mm, okay, auto. Deploy, move all units on the row, boost self by one. So this becomes a 10 set unit, and the rest gets moved around? It becomes 12 because it um, the effort means uh, you get it every time. Uh, this ah, happens. okay. So if it removes three draw, uh, three cards, it will be buffed by three. Exactly. Okay. The wording is not perfect, but so yeah. this 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 we need to boost again, right? Boost. Them. Just boost. Yeah. They're really oh. happy to. Uh, <laughs> I mean, even if the the 24 unit gets killed, I mean it gets killed, right? I guess if it gets killed, it gets killed. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. I mean, uh... it would matter, but um, I guess uh, he would have already done it before, so that's fine. Oh, but now, no, we only like what was it with the with the same stats? You need to be careful that the highest cards don't have the same stats, right? That's right. So because it's for the uh, scorch and for the igni, right? But it will become damage in your turn, so that's kind of all, all right. But if it's only the highest card and others having the same um, stats, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right? Okay, so I can boost them again, right? Uh, sure. <laughs> boost it. <laughs> so, what happens when I run out of cards? Um, then you don't draw more. Oh, then he just gets to play a card every round and I don't get to do anything. Yes, okay. sure. And now we play this one, and we want to play it here. That's right. And then the other three get moved around randomly, mm -hmm. and this one gets bo boosted by three. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, an uh, interesting thing is that now we could make use of the entire armor, because he played Philippa, and she's dealing damage randomly. And we could make use of the entire three armor of every overdose. So, the overdose was like representing 18, like whooping 18 stats. For those who don't know, browser cards should usually represent between 10 and 12 stats. So getting an overdose for 18 in is like pretty pure bonkers, right? Really, really sick. So the armor never represents stats, it's just a pure defensive... Yeah. Oh, he still has his hero ability. I didn't even know that. It's not enough. Yeah, but don't still worry. I didn't know it. Yeah, as long as, I mean, the leader is... You can define yeah, the leader I just didn't pay attention to. Sure, sure. Just ignore the leader. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so fuck. victory. He was also not that bad. The silver border means that he was the highest level before. I mean, highest level, level fifteen. Yeah, the highest you could get in beta. Um, and you also um, collected fifty ore. Sorry. What can I do with the ore? Um, craft cards by Kex. Performance was also very good. So we are missing eight hundred XP. And another 1,200 to get to level 10. So we're missing that kind of 2,000 experience. And 2,000 experience is equivalent to roughly 20 games. Uh, so we will probably get that soon. 20 games is probably equivalent of 5 hours. <laughs> okay, <laughs> whatever.